Militaries around the world have had some interesting ideas for new weapon technologies. There are some stranger than fiction, like the Japanese balloon bombs or the spherical tank. Today we're taking a look at 15 failed military weapons. Number 15. The LED Incapacitator The most effective weapons on the battlefield are usually the ones that kill instantly. But military researchers have often tried to develop non-lethal alternatives that incapacitate the enemy. Not only does this reduce deaths, but enables troops to capture prisoners to interrogate, so can help with intelligence gathering too. It also has potential uses for crowd control, where lethal weapons can only be used as an absolute last resort, so anyone who can successfully develop one that will work will have plenty of customers around the world. One of the most high-profile weapons like this that have been deployed by the US military is the LED incapacitator, or as it's more commonly known, the puke ray. By broadcasting specific frequencies of light, the theory is that it can induce nausea, headaches, and vomiting, which makes the target incapable of doing anything else as they're overcome with sickness. While watching flickering lights will make anyone feel uncomfortable, the project encountered several problems. The first is that the weapon had to be pointed at a target at a very precise angle for the light to be seen in the way intended. And the second is that despite extensive trials, there's not actually a single known case of someone being sick as a result of it. Even though some people have been mildly annoyed by the exposure to the lights, many report no effects whatsoever. Number 14. Gyrojets There's a wide range of different guns that can be bought and used around the world, but while the designs may differ, the basic principles behind how they operate remain the same. Projectiles are shot out of a barrel of a gun by high gas pressure that's formed behind them, an effect that's usually achieved by the combustion of a propellant like gunpowder. There have, however, been attempts to design firearms that work in a completely different way, and one of the most famous groups are known as gyrojets. The idea was to create something much lighter and easier to handle than a traditional gun, and to do this, the whole firing mechanism was redesigned. Instead of firing a bullet in a normal way, gyrojets were essentially small rocket launchers. The projectiles were called microjets, and once leaving the barrel of the weapon, they would propel themselves towards the target. This meant that there was very little recoil, which meant they were easier to aim, and despite leaving the barrel at a relatively slow speed, they would soon accelerate to 1,250 feet per second. The problem was that they were extremely expensive to make, especially compared to traditional weapons, and they had one major flaw as a result of the time it took for the projectile to increase in speed. They were useless at short range within 30 feet. Despite being promised at first, gyro jets were never adopted, but today are somewhat of a collector's item. Even the most basic models of the ones produced can be worth more than $1,000, but you'll rarely ever see one being fired because each of the rounds can cost upwards of $100. Three, two, one. Number 13. Japanese Balloon Bombs World War II saw fighting break out across virtually every corner of the Earth, but the mainland United States managed to avoid the conflict altogether. At least that's what most people think. But there was an event in 1945 when five children and their pregnant Sunday school teacher came across a Japanese balloon bomb weapon in Montana, which exploded and killed them all. They were the only deaths in the continental U.S. because of the war. And while it may seem like the weapon that killed them must have been effective to reach that far inland, when you hear about the entire program, you'll realize how truly ineffective they were and why they were declared an utter failure. The idea behind the balloon bombs was simple. The 33-foot diameter balloons would carry a payload of 35 pounds of explosives and would be released to an altitude of 30,000 feet, where the jet stream would carry them east and over America. When there, they would be released and were supposed to cause random destruction to homes, farms, and structures across the country. Japanese troops actually released 9,000 of these weapons, but in the end, just a handful made it to the US, and of those, only one was known to have detonated. This gave the weapon a kill rate of just 0.06%, and while Japanese propaganda tried to call it a success, they were forced to cancel the program. Many of the large white balloons remain unaccounted for, however, and the last remnants were found as recently as 1992. It's quite possible there are still viable devices in remote regions of the US to this day, so if you ever see a mysterious balloon in the woods, it's best to stay well away. Number 12. Yao one since the release of Star Wars, people have been obsessed with the possibility of laser weapons. Lightsabers may well be a step too far, but the potential for using laser technology in combat has always been something militaries around the world have been interested in researching, albeit with limited results. One of the most high-profile attempts was the Yao-1, 
a modified Boeing 747 aircraft with a noticeably strange rounded structure on its nose from where a chemical oxygen iodine laser was emitted. The idea was that the plane could be deployed in response to a missile attack and the laser would destroy tactical ballistic missiles mid-flight. The problem, of course, is that it simply didn't work, as with most laser weapons, the Yao-1 wasn't strong enough and by some estimates needed to be 20 to 30 times more powerful to even have a chance of working in an operational capacity. In the end, only one of the planes was ever built, and after 16 years of development and an estimated cost of $5 billion, the project was terminated in 2010. That doesn't mean, however, that laser weapons and defense systems are impossible. The learning from the project has been applied to smaller scale devices, and as technology improves, perhaps enough power can be generated to make something like this feasible. Number 11. The Great Panjian Drum The Great Panjian Drum was possibly the best-named weapon from the Second World War, but it also turned out to be one of the biggest failures. Military commanders diverted huge resources on all sides to develop weaponry that could turn the tide of the battle, and British generals had specifically asked for a device that could be used to break holes in the 10-foot-tall concrete defenses along the coast of Europe and Scandinavia that are known as the Atlantic Wall. The further requirement was that the weapon could be deployed from a boat because it would surely be a suicide mission to place it by the wall by hand. And so one of the solutions was the Great Panjian Drum. Made up of two large wooden wheels that were 10 feet in diameter and connected together with a steel drum containing 4,000 pounds of explosives, the weapon would float and was propelled by several cordite rockets that were attached to each side of the wheels. In theory, the weapon should have been able to reach speeds of up to 60 miles an hour and would have been virtually unstoppable until it reached its target. All seemed to be going well in tests, but the weapon always failed for the same reason. The rockets didn't allow for its aim to be accurate enough and would often detach from the wheels, which would leave the weapon to move in an uncontrollable way. The risk of damaging Allied troops instead of those of the enemy were too great, and in its final test, the freed rockets almost injured the generals that were watching from a distance. The project was ultimately scrapped, and the Great Panjian Drum was consigned to history. Number 10. The Mark 14 Torpedo The Mark 14 Torpedo played an important role in the U.S. Navy's operations during the Second World War and for 40 years afterwards. But to begin with, the submarine-launched anti-ship torpedo was far from being fit for purpose and required significant redesigns before it worked as intended. The weapon had been designed before the war and as a result hadn't been tested anywhere near as much as similar weapons would be today. It was a more frugal time and since each torpedo cost a significant amount, no one was going to sign off wasting that money just to test that it worked. As a result, for the first 20 months of the war that torpedoes were used for, there were several frustrating problems. Quite often they would completely miss the target by running underneath it thanks to the fact that they ran 10 feet deeper than the set depth and would also often explode before reaching the target because of a faulty magnetic exploder. Even when the strike against the enemy ship was textbook, the torpedoes would often fail to explode because of a fault in a contact exploder, and on occasion they would simply travel through the water in a large circle and end up back at the point they had been fired from. Once all of these issues were acknowledged, the Mark 14 was replaced by the Mark 18. Designers went back to the drawing board to fix the errors, and once they had done, the Mark 14 became an incredibly effective weapon. Number 9. The Ball Tank Most tanks have similar designs, at least so much as you can recognize them as tanks. During the Second World War, the Nazis worked on developing brand new vehicles that would be even more effective and didn't look anything like what we've become accustomed to. But ultimately, virtually all of these attempts failed. Possibly the most bizarre-looking concept tank was known as the Kugelpanzer, or the ball tank. Covered in a fifth of an inch of steel and mounted on rollers that were five feet in diameter, it was designed for just a single occupant who could sit on a saddle similar to those on a motorcycle. From there, they could look onto the battlefield through a slit and fire a machine gun from below. Weighing 1.8 tons, it was fitted with a 25-horsepower piston engine that gave it a top speed of 5 miles per hour. So with a low speed and very little firepower at its disposal, military historians have been left wondering what its purpose could have possibly been. It's possible the intent was for it to be able to traverse tricky terrain or to roll over trenches, but in the end, only one of them was ever built. Even the Nazis didn't want it, though, and it was shipped to Japan before being captured by the Russian army in 1945. 
We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. The Iceberg Ship Battleships are incredibly powerful vessels that can change the direction of a war at sea. And during the Second World War, shipyards across the world went into overdrive to build as many as possible. There was a big problem that limited how many could be produced, however, and that was the large amount of steel that's needed in their construction. Allied forces found themselves facing a particular problem at sea. German U-boats would attack vessels in the mid-Atlantic from positions that were beyond the range of land-based aircraft. And there weren't enough Navy ships to deploy them to counteract them. The British Navy came up with a plan, though, called Project Habakkuk, where they'd try to build a ship from a completely different material. With research based in Canada, work began to build an aircraft carrier from Picrete, which is a mixture of 86% ice and 14% wood pulp and sawdust. While this may sound crazy to make a ship mainly from ice, the initial tests on scale models proved to be successful, and plans were well underway to making the actual thing. The problem was that the cost continued to rise and were becoming prohibitively expensive, and issues in the structural cohesion were found when building increasingly large vessels from the material project was scrapped before the final design was ever built, mainly because it had taken so much time that longer-range aircraft were beginning to enter service and other ships became available. Still, there were those who were convinced that it would have worked if given the opportunity, as long as the ship was never required to sail in warmer waters than the Atlantic. Number 7. XM-2001 Crusader the XM-2001 Crusader had been touted as the next generation of self-propelled howitzers that would significantly increase the U.S. Army's firepower for years to come. Intended to enter service in 2008, the vehicles were designed to be more mobile, more lethal, provide better protection to those inside, and improve the accuracy and overall effectiveness of each one. To do this, the design included composite armor, automated ammunition, loading and handling, a powerful engine to allow it to keep up with other military assets, and a newly designed cannon with increased rates of fire compared to previous howitzers. At a cost of $11 billion, a huge amount of research went into perfecting the XM-2001, but to everyone's surprise, in 2002, the Secretary of Defense at the time, Donald Rumsfeld, canceled the project altogether and cited two main reasons for this. It was neither mobile nor precise enough. Military officials remained adamant that it was a weapon fit for the future of modern warfare, but the funds that had been reserved for the program were reallocated elsewhere, particularly as, at the time, the military's focus was on less easily identifiable enemies. Of the 480 Crusaders that had been planned, only one was ever completed, and because of concerns about its effectiveness, it was never deployed on a battlefield. Instead, it can still be seen to this day at the Cannon Park at Fort Sill. Number 6. VZ-1 Pawnee As everyone knows, the shooter who's on higher terrain has the advantage, but what if the battlefield is on flat land? In the 1950s, the Office of Naval Research began developing an answer to this problem, and it was called the VZ-1 Pawnee. It was essentially a personal floating platform that allowed individual soldiers to fly above the battlefield. Powered by a counter-rotating ducted fan, there were no controls, and instead the operator could determine the direction simply by shifting their body weight. Surprisingly, the design actually worked, and the first successful test flights took place in 1955. Military officials saw a problem, however. They were small, weren't very fast, and offered no protection for the person on them who would be visible to the entire battlefield, and so were judged to be completely impractical for use in combat. Only six prototypes had been built by the time the program was cancelled and only two of them have survived to this day. But they've become legendary in the time since. And while they'll never be useful for military purposes, there are plenty of other scenarios where a vehicle like this could be beneficial. So there are a number of hobbyists around the world who are looking to revive the original VZ-1 plans and put them into production once more. Number 5. Krumlauf During the Second World War, the Germans devoted huge resources to research and development of new weapons, and in most cases, these were designed to overcome the limitations of traditional weapons they already had access to. One of the problems they had realized about guns, in particular rifles, is that they could only be used to shoot at an enemy in a straight line, and this would inevitably mean an increased risk to the person holding the weapon. They came up with a solution called the Krumlauf. It was an extension designed to be fitted to the Sturmgewehr 44 assault rifle and was a curved barrel that would allow its user to shoot at a target from around a corner in relative safety. 
To enable them to see what they were looking at, it was fitted with a periscope-like device, and various different versions were produced to offer different curves with angles of between 30 and 90 degrees. Only the 30-degree versions were produced in significant numbers, but they soon faced problems. Unsurprisingly, these barrels underwent extreme pressures as the bullets fired through them and would break after shooting a maximum of 300 rounds. Their reliability became even worse for higher-angled models, and the act of carrying them around the battlefield for a very precise purpose became completely impractical. Despite attempts by engineers to make them more reliable, they were ultimately declared a failure and production ceased. In recent years, though, with improved technologies, the idea of a corner-shooting gun has re-emerged. It's likely the weapons of the future might well have this capability, but they achieve this by ways other than simply having a curved barrel. Number 4. Bat Bombs Animals have long been used for warfare, from archers on horseback to Hannibal's troops traveling with elephants, and even in the modern age, militaries have been experimenting with various ways of using them for their needs. During the Second World War, for example, pigeons were used to send messages, and more recently, dolphins and whales have been investigated as potential allies. But perhaps the most unusual idea, and the one that proved to be the biggest failure, was the idea of a bat bomb. Bats tend to find cozy, dark, and warm places to roost, and it's this behavior that the American military attempted to harness during the Second World War. The idea was that they'd deploy bats that were armed with small incendiary devices, and once they settled in homes across an enemy's territory, they could trigger extensive fires that would take considerable effort to bring under control. The so-called bat bombs were bomb-shaped canisters that had more than a thousand compartments, each of which contained a hibernating Mexican free-tailed bat. And once they were dropped, they could cause extensive damage, particularly to the wood and paper buildings that were commonplace in Japan at the time. Ultimately, however, the unpredictable nature of where the bats flew, along with the cost of creating each bomb, the risk involved with transporting it, and the ethical concerns of sending thousands of bats to their doom each time one was deployed, led to the cancellation of its development. Those responsible for the project maintained that it definitely would have worked, but without a single successful case of its deployment, it's generally regarded as being a failure. Number 3. Comanche Stealth Helicopter in the 1980s, the U.S. military saw a need to replace their aging helicopter fleet with a new design fit for the changing needs of combat, and after testing several designs, the choice was made to develop the Boeing Sikorsky RAH-66 Comanche stealth helicopter. Two prototypes were built and began testing in 1996, which used a number of methods to make them virtually undetectable by the enemy, such as being coated in a radar-absorbent material and having a reduced radar signature while still having a powerful armament. The problem, though, was that the sacrifices made to make it a stealth helicopter also meant they proved to be unfit for the battlefield. The main means of defense was to remain hidden, so they were vulnerable to anti-aircraft weapons which had improved to such an extent that even the stealth adaptations weren't enough. In 2004, the Army conceded that the upgrades needed to make the helicopters viable simply weren't worth the cost, and the program was shut down, after spending more than $7 billion on development. Number 2. The Novgorod When you think of the design of a warship, you'd imagine a streamlined vessel that's heavily armed and be able to speed through the water. But the Novgorod, which is usually remembered as the worst warship design ever, looked very different. It was designed by the Imperial Russian Navy in the 1870s and was intended to be a coastal defense ship. The hull was circular in shape, which reduced its draft and allowed it to carry much more armor and equipment than other ships of a similar size. But this unusual shape came with major drawbacks. They were slow to move in the water, which meant they weren't agile enough to engage in combat and proved to be very difficult to steer. Firing one of the guns could send the ship into a spin, and the power of the six propellers was unable to keep the ship on course. Furthermore, they couldn't cope with poor weather conditions, which are commonplace in the Black Sea and would be prone to rolling and pitching, which made the guns impossible to aim. The one Novgorod that was built was decommissioned in 1903 and converted for use as a storeship, and surprisingly, after the lessons learned, no one's ever tried to build a circular ship like this ever again. Number 1. Nuclear Landmines Landmines are some of the most destructive and indiscriminate weapons ever designed, and even long after a war has ended, they continue to cause harm to civilian populations. There have been concerted efforts to ban their use altogether because of this, which makes a British project from the 1950s all the more ridiculous. Known as Blue Peacock, the idea was simple. They'd build a series of 10 kiloton nuclear landmines that could be placed along the North German plain at short notice, 
and be used to defend against an attack from Russia. They would be detonated by wire or an eight-day timer and would not only destroy facilities and installations, but also render regions impossible to pass because of the nuclear fallout. Things got even more ridiculous when, during development, they discovered that the cold temperatures in the area where they would be used would potentially damage the electronics, so much so that they'd fail to work, so a form of insulation was needed. They tried blankets and miniature generators, but found the best way to keep the interior warm was to place a chicken inside with enough food and water to live for a week, during which time their body warmth would ensure the mine remained functional. Fortunately, the decision was made to cancel the project because of risks of nuclear fallout, and worldwide political repercussions of their use were too much. But the history books show these weapons were frighteningly close to actually being deployed. Watch our Machines playlist for more top 15 videos about awesome machines. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best machine videos.